Welcome to this short video on how to use the Cactus tool and its current uh, iteration, which is uh, uh, version 1.5. This is a preliminary version for testing, so um, any comments that you have um, would be gratefully received. To use the tool, just take the link um, that you've been given for the, um, uh, for the Google Sheet uh, and copy it into the um, address bar of your uh, browser and you'll see the tool come up like this. And what we've got is a template, so which you won't be able to edit. So uh, what you do then is you go to file like this and then make a copy and then make a copy uh, for yourself of the version that you want to edit and use. I'm not going to do this now because I've actually already made a copy. Um, so I'm going to take you now to uh, a copy that I've made, uh, which uh, covers a particular example in this case uh, related to smoking cessation. So this is a copy that I've made for sm uh, which uh, looks specifically at how we can uh, increase the proportion of people who are going to be attending uh, free stop smoking services in the UK. So this is a standard spreadsheet, um, like an Excel sheet. Uh, the, the Google ones are a little bit different and have a little bit different functionality, but most of it's the same. Uh, so you'll see at the bottom here, there's a number of tabs. One's called Instructions, then one's called Cactus, which is the main tool. And then there's a tab which is a master list of all the behavior change techniques in the behavior change technique ontology, around 280 something of them. Um, and that's there for reference in case you want to look at it. And then there's one uh, which is a set of what I've called cactus clusters. These are clusters of behavior change techniques that correspond to a, a large degree to the uh, groupings of behavior change techniques in the behavior change ontology. Not completely because of, um, for this practical tool it's uh, helpful to classify them in slightly different ways uh, but mostly. And then there's various all other uh, tabs here which you don't need to worry about. You can have a look at them but they're used by the, uh, by the system to um, uh, to fill in the tabs that you're interested in. So if we start with instructions then I've uh, created a set of uh, instructions here, step-by-step -step guide of how to go through it. And I'm just going to take you through those now. So the spreadsheet that you're interested in here is the one called uh, Cactus at the bottom here. And um, the first thing you need to do um, once you get into the spreadsheet and your own version of it that you can change uh, is to enter uh, whatever your behavioral target is your population or the group that you're interested in and the setting. And you'll see that um, whenever you hover on one of these cells that has a little triangle, dark triangle in the corner there, then uh, it will bring up uh, a little pop up which will explain what you're supposed to do in that cell. So uh, here's one example. There's another example here, here as well. Um, and then there's examples here and so on. So wherever you see one of these little dark triangles, you can just hover over it and it'll give you some information. So what we see about uh, the behavioral target is that it includes more than just the behavior. It's the behavior, in this case, uh, attending a local authority stop smoking service, but it also includes, in, includes the precise target that you're looking for, um, which uh, very often will be some change in the behavior, either getting people to do something or getting people not to do something or increasing the amount that they do something or reducing it or whatever. And in an ideal world, when you're um, uh, creating behavior change interventions, you should have some idea about the extent of change that you're looking for and where it's going from, particularly if you're dealing with a population. So in this case, we say um, uh, attending local authority stops working services each year from change it from 5% to 15%. So that's, that's your target. It includes the behavior um, and uh, what you're starting from in relation to that behavior and what you're hoping to go to, whether it's an individual or a group or a population. Then you'll uh, want to put the target population or group. Uh, in this case, we're talking about cigarette smokers. Uh, we could be more specific. We could be 
talking about um, cigarette smokers in England, but we're also going to talk about England as the setting, so that may not be necessary. Um, but uh, try and uh, be as specific as you can about this target group. And then the setting is the setting where the population uh, resides, or it could be the setting where the behaviour is going to occur. For example, if you're interested in road user behaviour, um, and particularly the behaviour of people in cars, then the setting might be cars. But you could also be referring to the setting where the intervention uh, is actually delivered as well. So you can use this to specify any or all three of those, where the population is, where the behaviour occurs, or where the uh, intervention is going to be delivered. And that sets you off um, with whatever it is you're trying to achieve. The next step is to go to this column here, column B, and to go down the list of our combi questions to make the combi diagnosis. And what we've done is we've identified eight questions each for capability, opportunity and motivation. And uh, the answers for relating to these uh, questions uh, are ones that you select from drop down lists here. And in step two, the first thing you want to do is to say, is this going to be relevant for this behavior, behavioral target in this population, in this setting? And if it is relevant, um, how much do you think it's worth targeting? For example, it might not be worth targeting if people are already perfectly fine with it. For example, if everyone, if you're confident that everyone is fully aware um, of being able to, uh, or the availability of attending a lo local stop smoking service, then you would just say that this is not relevant or there's no room for improvement uh, or little room for improvement. Um, but the other options are there could be some room for improvement or there could be major room for improvement. Or it could be that you don't know. Now, to answer these questions, uh, you would either do audience research or look at the literature. Um, or if um, there's no other option, you could try and get expert opinion on it. So you can fill all these uh, um, uh, cells in very quickly if you want to. But... Uh, obviously, the more information you have based on a, a proper analysis of the scientific literature and any research you might have done, the more likely you are to get, a, to get an accurate impression. And in this case, the evidence is pretty clear from population data that there's quite a bit of room for improvement here. So that's a potential target. Then we've got things like uh, how well do they know how to do it? And I've put major room for improvement here. Um, there may be some you know, there's always a matter of judgment. Uh, but again, uh, what we often find in the survey literature um, and people's behaviours relating to attending stop smoking services is that even when they know that they exist, they're, they're not 100% sure uh, how uh, to actually go about getting access to it. So that may be another potential target. And we go down this list. So how well do they understand the benefits or costs of not doing it or doing it? Uh, remembering here that with, when we talk about behaviours, behaviour can include not doing things as well as doing them. Uh, you, you should express your behaviours in whatever way uh, seems most natural given the, um, uh, given the context. So, for example, stopping smoking might be a behaviour here rather than smoking uh, if, you were, if you were interested in that specifically as a behaviour. Or, or stopping people or reducing the amount of bullying, for example, or sexist behaviours, that would be uh, something as well. So, so your ba remember, your behavioural target can relate to uh, actually engaging in a behaviour or stopping people from engaging in a behaviour. And then other uh, ones from the combi diagnosis are how confident are that they can do it? These are all capability issues. How far do they have the cognitive, perceptual, psychomotor skills to do it? Remember, these are all very broad brush categories. Um, and in a particular instance, you may well uh, uh, and, and will obviously have a, a specific idea about what that means in case of this particular behaviour. For example, in relation to a sporting behaviour, psychomotor skills could be a critical thing. Um, 
So uh, we've got things like how far do they have the ability to make judgments needed to do it, uh, for example, to assess risks and so on. Uh, how far uh, do they have the self-regulatory capacity or resilience for it? I won't go through explaining all of these in detail because that's obviously way beyond the scope of this. Um, but in order to be able to answer these questions satisfactorily, you should have a good understanding of what all these questions refer to. Um, and then we've got things like the physical strength, uh, flexibility or stamina. And then we have the opportunity um, questions which relate to physical and social opportunity. So how normal is it within their social environment? That's a social opportunity factor. Formal rules uh, is a social opportunity factor and so on and so forth. And then the, uh, uh, for the motivation questions, we've got how worthwhile do they think it is? So um, how, how much enjoyment or satisfaction do they expect to get from it? How far is it provoked by an emotional drive state such as anger or hunger, for example, um, or in the case of cigarette smoking, cravings uh, relating to nicotine dependence? Um, how far do they expect it to reduce or prevent physical or mental discomfort? Um, how, well, how well does it fit with their self-identity, uh, etc., etc. So in a sense, what you've got here in these 24 questions, eight each for capability, opportunity and motivation, is a, is a way of classifying all the different uh, factors that may influence a person's behaviour. And a lot of what we're doing in behavioural science is to unpick those uh, and to find out how they uh, play different roles in different behaviours. So you're going to go down this list, column B, uh, making a judgment about these. Um, and that then takes you on to the next thing. So it's not enough for a behaviour to be something that if you were to be able to change it would make a big difference. You've also got to make a judgment about how feasible it is to target it. And there are a number of factors that will come into play there. First of all, have you got the resources? Have you got the, the, um, the, the money to be able to invest in it? Um, how practicable is it given your, uh, the people who are going to be able to work on it, for example? Um, do you have the time to be able to develop something that would target it and so on? And we capture these um, in uh, what we call the APs criteria. Um, which you should uh, uh, gen up on or fami be familiar with in order to be able to use this tool. Uh, it's in the behaviour change wheel um, guide. So you might judge that it's very feasible or you might say, well, it's feasible, but it could be difficult uh, or it could not be feasible or it might not be relevant uh, or you might not know. Um, and so you're going to form a judgment about all of those. Again, as far as possible, using evidence. Um, but there'll always be some kind of judgment involved. So it's a good idea to do this with a group of experts. And then uh, on step four, this is where you pull together the information from steps two and three to decide on a priority that you're going to attach to a targeting each of these combi constructs. Um, and what you probably want to do is to, you can say high, medium or low, is to select as high the ones that you, you think, right, these are worth developing an intervention to target. Um, anything lower than high, whether it's low or medium, are ones you're probably, at least at this stage, not going to um, focus on. So that's probably the criterion that I'd use. Uh, whether, whether this is something that reaches your threshold. Um, it's still worth differentiating low from medium because you may go back. Uh, if you find, for example, as you start to develop an intervention or you get more information that something you previously thought of as high actually is not, um, and you might then revisit this list and have a look, well, OK, maybe we'll go to one of these uh, lower priority ones. It just gives you that flexibility. So after step four, you've got a whole series of things that you think are worth targeting in terms of the combi diagnosis. And this takes you really to the meat of the thing in terms of identifying the components of your intervention, which is step five. And um, what you see here in this grid um, are a series of um, drop down lists where there is a drop down list. Um, present, which you can see here, 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 and so on, as opposed to just a blank cell. That's where um, I've made a judgment about the fact that this is likely to be uh, a, 
a, a type of behavior change technique or a cluster of behavior change techniques uh, that's going to be relevant for this particular target. So, um, for example, if you've decided to target um, raising awareness of uh, the behavior and what constitutes it, then a certain set of BCTs will, come, will become relevant. And if you click on this, you'll see that we've got the BCTs from the BCT ontology, which relates specifically to this cluster. Okay, these clusters are very similar to, but not identical to the ones uh, that uh, the high level clusters in the behavior change technique ontology. Um, I've changed a few of them uh, around uh, and give them uh, somewhat different names because for the purposes of this tool, uh, as an applied tool, um, it, it just uh, seemed more natural. If you're interested in looking at what um, I, uh, what we mean by each of these clusters here along this row, you just uh, hover over it, and then if you click on this, you'll, it'll take you to actually the cactus clusters uh, tab here. You can see down here, and the cell within it. So um, in this particular case, you'll see that raise awareness of a behaviour. Uh, it's described as a cluster that tells people about the behavior um, and gets them to think of it as an option if they haven't come across it before. But it also provides information about precisely what the behavior involves and, and may involve increasing its salience so that they're more likely to think of it at critical moments. So that's what this cluster uh, involves. I'll be um, amending this and updating this as people use it. So um, this may change over time. So once you've, um, if you do that, then you'll have to click back on the cactus uh, uh, tab here to get back to where you were. Um, so you might say, okay, we're going to choose here just simply um, advise specific behavior uh, BCT. Uh, but we also might want to say increase awareness, uh, sorry, increase salience of the behavior through some sort of marketing campaign. So now we've begun to fill in this grid here that uh, for this particular combi target, we've identified a couple of BCTs that we want to focus on. And we can repeat this for all the different uh, behavior change combi targets that um, we've identified as high priority. So for this one, for example, on advise uh, on or show how to do the behavior, there's a number of BCTs here, like guide how to perform the behavior BCT. So you might do that and so on and so forth. Uh, some of these uh, are quite long lists. This is quite a long list, as you can see, anything relating to the goals. Um, but you should be able to quickly skim down it and have a look at ones that you think might be particularly relevant. Um, uh, so that will. So what you'll have then at the end of this process is a set of um, combi targets that you've identified as high priority and a set of BCTs that you've selected as particularly relevant to that. And that will document in very uh, simple way um, and formally exactly what your your thinking that your uh, behavior change intervention strategy might be with regards to your choice of BCTs. Now you can stop there in terms of the spreadsheet, uh, job done, you've identified some BCTs, or you can move to step six, which is less structured, uh, in which you can then uh, write in, so that you've got it all in one place, a summary of how exactly you're gonna do this. For example, if you're doing a mass media campaign, what kind of messaging you might use to, uh, to deliver this, these particular BCTs or if it's an app, or if it's um, uh, some sort of pharmaceutical intervention, uh, or some uh, counselling intervention, um, some legislation, whatever it might be. It, this here gives you an opportunity to use, in your own words, um, uh, a description of what it is that you're trying to achieve. So that's it. Um, that's what this spreadsheet does. It's, uh, it's a first attempt, and so uh, I'm sure it will change as time goes on. Um, but uh, um, it should uh, at least provide uh, a structured way of thinking about how you do your combi diagnosis and how you go from that to your selection of BCTs.